Should I introduce myself as Daniel or Little Brother? Uh, my name's Daniel Brunskill. I play music under the name Little Brother, and I like to drink a lot of tea. How did you choose your name, Little Brother? I have, I'm, I'm the youngest of, of three brothers. I have three older brothers who inspired me to play music. One of them especially taught me to play guitar and sort of helped me learn to write songs and stuff. So the name is almost a tribute to those three brothers for me. A thank you. So did you know about the other band called Little Brother? The, uh, the rap group. Yeah, there's, there's a rap group from like the 90s called Little Brother, but they haven't released anything since 2007, and my music is not rap music. So I'm hoping we never get in a copyright battle, but who knows, it might happen one day. How would you describe your music to someone who's never listened before? Uh, I would, I'd say it's like singer-songwriter, Ben Howard copycat. <laughs> Do you find yourself listening to similar sounding artists as your music style or is it completely different? Uh, that's an interesting question because lately I've just started to get back into acoustic music but I have been listening to a lot of electronica and like rap a lot so uh, Kendrick Lamar's album came out and it basically just, like changed my life and it was all I listened to for a few months. I, I want to be a gangster but I'm too white but lately I've been listening to the Civil Wars album, the Civil Wars and it's just like blowing my mind. So it's like inspiring me songwriting wise again, which is quite exciting. <laughs> yeah. Who inspired your passion for music with what from the very beginning? So is that your brother or...? Yeah, well my brother used to play guitar, so I'd sit outside his bedroom with my like quarter sized guitar and strum away. I didn't know any chords, I'd just strum open and pretend I was playing what I was hearing through the door. And that was like my first musical experience. Uh, then I learned guitar through like lessons. But then when I started writing songs, was I, watched, I watched a film by Glenn Hansard called Once. And it's like a music, it's like a musical about an Irish musician who records an album and doesn't go out with a girl, basically. <laughs> but um, the music was amazing and like blew my mind. And I decided at that moment that I was going to be an acoustic songwriter. And I did. I started writing songs. I was listening to your music last night, and they were very beautiful and well crafted. So where do you find the passion for your lyrics? Um, where do my lyrics come from? Uh, lots of them are just made up. I, I, I haven't had that many life experiences, so sometimes I just write about completely fictional circumstances. But usually it's something like that I've been thinking about, something that's happened, and I just kind of, I kind of over-exaggerate my life, I guess. Yeah. That's a good way to put it. <laughs> so, I take it then, is it an emotional process for you? Yeah, usually. Yeah. I, I say the best songs are written late at night when you're not thinking about it, <laughs> and you just... The best, the best songs are written when you just pick up your guitar and you're feeling emotional about something and you just play them start to finish without thinking about it and you go, oh, whoa, I just wrote a song. Yeah, those are the best songs. There's no set time you record, it's just you could wake up in the middle of the night and be like, yep, that's a line, yeah. yep. Yeah, definitely. Things come into my head and I like think about them for months then I sit down and play and it comes out quite quickly. But I'll have one, one line in my head for like a month. So how do you decide what gets to be made into a song? Like what lyrics become a song? Oh, there's two things. Either it's one that I just can't get out of my head, or it's something that I'm fiddling with and someone comes into the lounge or wherever I'm playing in my bedroom and be like, oh, that's really cool. That's when I, like, hang on to something. So I have a song called Watching Grass Grow, and it was just like a silly little chorus I was singing one afternoon, so it was fun. And my mum came in and she's like, is that yours? Oh, it's lovely. And I'm like, oh, I'll make it to a song then. And it's been, like, one of my most successful songs at gigs, so I always, like, take other people's opinion really seriously, eh? So then what comes first for you, the melody or the lyrics? Uh, once upon a time, I would I would write I would write lyrics first, and then work out how to play them. But now, now my music I like play the melody on the guitar, so I tend to come up with a, like a guitar melody and start singing over it. So the melody comes first, really. Yeah. <laughs> how do you know when a song is one hundred percent finished? Who you're liking? Oh, I've yet to experience it. Really? If, if I ever if I ever finish a song to one hundred percent to my liking, I will tell you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so what is the favourite song that you've written yourself? I think it's possibly possibly my song Pirate's Desires, which is the first one I wrote for this project, Little Brother. Uh, yeah, I, I wrote it one night, it was like after Christmas, and our Christmas tree was still up, and I like sat in a dark room with just the Christmas lights, and I sung this song about a pirate, and it just like came from nowhere. And uh, yeah, it was like the song that inspired me to keep writing these type of songs, I guess, so it's a bit more special to me than the others. But I love all my songs, so... And I hate all my songs. <laughs> Both at once. Yeah. <laughs> what is the most fulfilling thing to you about writing music? The most fulfilling thing is when you get up on stage and you play the song you've written 
and you see it connect with people and people enjoy it, that is the moment that you're like, oh, that was worth it. That all those late nights and hating yourself for weeks, it was all it was all worth it. So yeah. do you write songs with that in mind, or do you, is it more of a personal thing to you? I definitely do now. I didn't used to, but now that I play shows, I'm always thinking, how will an audience respond to this? Will people like it? Because it's not it's not about like trying to be commercial or trying to sell yourself. It's just what's the point of making something no one likes? So I want to write music that connects with people, that can be a part of their life. So I always think about how will this relate and will it be enjoyed. I have some songs that I've written that I don't play because they're sort of personal songs that people won't relate to. I have a song about how I think colour shouldn't exist. And it doesn't go down very well at gigs because <laughs> no one else quite gets it. So I have a few songs like that that are sort of just for me. But. If you could dabble in another genre of music, I guess we know what this is going to be. <laughs> what, which would it be and why? It would be undoubtedly rap music because the energy and the culture and like the fashion is just like so cool. If I could be a rapper, I would definitely. Have you tried? No, I haven't. <laughs> I might one day, but... New side project? Yeah, I wouldn't tell anyone. I'd have to keep it a secret because I get laughed at. <laughs> so what do you think about when you're up on stage and performing? I, I don't think about anything. I, I sort of have this special space in my brain that is uh, for performing and it's sort of like, it's very compartmentalised. I sort of, oh, I don't even know, like my brain basically goes blank. I can't remember anything that isn't the song. So I can't remember people's names, I can't remember what day it is. I, I played a concert on Anzac Day and I was, I was in between songs and someone shouted out um, something like, oh, I'll dedicate a song to the soldiers or like, um, and it was Anzac Day, and they were talking about, um, yeah, yeah Gallipoli. Uh, but I just couldn't, I just couldn't think of that. And I thought they were like trying to be gangster, like shout out to all my soldiers. I was like, what are you guys up to? Oh, I've had a few embarrassing moments like that, where I've forgotten people's names on stage and introduced songs wrong. So I don't really, like, my brain just goes, and my fingers and voice just do their own thing. And then it like switches back on at the end of the show. <laughs> So this is all fun. What was the first album you ever bought and do you still listen to it? First album I bought? I can't remember what was the first album I bought. Well, like with my own money. Ones. One of the first albums I, I got was actually given to my brother. And it was a Counting Crows album called Hard Candy. And um, I, used to, I used to put it on and I'd like open the lyric booklet back before we had digital music. The good old days. And I'd, I'd, like, I'd play, the, play the album and I'd sing through all the lyrics. It's like cover to cover. And that's like where I started singing and started paying attention to lyrics, I guess. And I still listen to that album, but not very much. Um, yeah, yeah. I often, I often like go back to those albums I listened to when I was young. But it's like a nostalgic thing. My music tastes have changed quite a lot. Yeah. So, what is the best advice you've ever been given? Um, I'm sure, I can think of something. What's some advice you wish someone had given you? Uh, I, I, wish, I wish someone had told me that you didn't have to be good at playing music, to play music. Because for a long time I thought I wasn't a good enough singer to bother writing songs. I wanted to be a guitarist in someone else's band. But I kind of, I kind of wish someone had told me, like showed me a Bob Dylan song and said, hey, <laughs> you don't have to be good at singing to be a songwriter. Uh, yeah, so I don't class myself as a good singer and it held me back for a long time. Yeah, now I don't care about my terrible voice. <laughs> <laughs> so, what song is stuck in your head right now? Won't you stay with me? That one, Sam, uh, Sam Smith. Smith. Yeah. yeah, but only because my flatmate was annoyingly singing it all morning. <laughs> I, uh, I hate having songs stuck in my head. So, is there anyone you've dreamed of collaborating with? Who would I love to collaborate with? There's a music producer called Brian Eno, who uh, is he like he brings out the best in musicians. And I'd love him to produce an album for me. That would be like my dream, but that's not a very interesting answer to the question. So, that's all right. You're so right. I will say I will say Taylor Swift because I listened to her album Fifteen. Is it called Fifteen? Fearless, Fearless. And I was like, I didn't understand why people like Taylor Swift. Why is she so popular? I listened to her album just for a laugh, really. And I just like, I just loved it. I felt like I felt like I was a fifteen-year-old girl. And I, 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 yeah, I don't know. I kind of admire her now as a songwriter. And I'd like to, I'd like to work with her and like create some like really good non-poppy songs, but they'll never happen. You never know. <laughs> so, Text me, Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> have you always aspired to being a singer-songwriter, or have you ever like contemplated going other ways? I wanted to be a rock star. That's why I learned guitar. I wanted to be in U2. 
I wanted to be the edge until I realised he was old and bald. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I wanted to be a rock star. I wanted to be an electric guitarist and play guitar solos and stuff, which is quite different from being a singer-songwriter. But I did always want to play music ever since I was young. So, where do you see Little Brother in five years? It's a difficult question. Probably in a very similar place, playing small gigs to small people and small bars. I, I, I'd, love, I'd, love, I'd love it to get a bit bigger. So are you working on any albums or anything right now that you'd like to talk about? <laughs> I, uh, I have developed, in the last sort of year, I have developed a weird phobia of recording. Uh, and it's terrible, it's a disaster, and I'm like, I'm like working through it. But I, um, I'm loving playing live. I'm hating recording. Every time I record, I just like totally lose faith in all of my songs, and I like hate my voice, and I hate my guitar playing. And um, so that's kind of like something I've been working through. <laughs> it's a work in progress. There are there are plans to record, but it's like it's like an emotional boundary for me to get over. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs>